Okay, good morning, everyone. We'll be starting in a couple of minutes. Just a quick sound check. Please type a one into the chat window if you can hear me. Thank you. Hey, plenty of ones. Thank you. We'll start in a couple of minutes. Okay, let's get started. Good morning and welcome to today's Tuesday Markets Outlook session. My name is Prakash Vijayanath. I'm a senior analyst here at Options Play. And today I am going to be walking you through how I am viewing the current market. So before we get started, just the usual disclaimer. The types of security forms and research tools used for this video are for demonstration purposes only and should not be considered a recommendation by Options Play or a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities. This video is not intended to be used for individual tax, legal, or investment planning advice. Our agenda for today, kicking off with the major equity indices, highlighting those key areas of support and resistance. A lot of ambiguity in the markets in recent days, but again, no surprise there due to the fact that we are going to be having a Fed meeting next week and most likely an announcement on a 50 point rate increase. From there, we'll be moving on to fixed income and commodities. We'll be taking a look at the sector rotational model, um, highlighting which sectors are outperforming and underperforming the overall market. I have a couple of subsectors of interest for you today, and we'll end today's session with some bullish and bearish market observations. So, starting off with the Fed hike probabilities here, the next meeting is next week on the 14th of December, so not that far away. And currently, the target rate is 375 to 400. And there's really two um, outcomes here that are likely to happen. Either we get a 75-point hike or a 50-point hike. A 50-point hike would take um, the current target rate to 425 to 450. And a 75-point hike would take the target rate to 450 to 475. And right now, as you can see, the probability of a 50-point hike still remains elevated. And it has remained elevated for almost a month now since the uh, since last month's inflation announcement or CPI announcement. And, you know, we are definitely expecting that 50-point hike. It has also, in my opinion, been priced in. However, there have been one or two uh, data metrics that have the potential to throw a spanner in the works. So we've had our jobs reports last week coming in slightly hotter than expected. We also have the non-manufacturing PMI coming in better than expected. And under normal economic conditions, that would be a huge plus. But um, due to the fact that you know inflation is a key concern, we have such high inflation, um, that th those data metrics coming in better than expected uh, could uh, could uh, be a contributing factor for the Fed to potentially raise um, interest rates higher than expected. I don't really view them. I, I don't really think that it'll, it'll happen this time. I do think 50 point hike is probably needed. But again, so much of that actually depends on next week. Um, we have a CPI announcement on December 13th. That will be very, very important with regards to what the Fed will do next. And we are seeing that ambiguity in play out to markets. So if we take a look here at the um, S&P, over the last few days, you know, since we last spoke, price was um, below the 404 level. 404 was definitely acting as uh, a key area of resistance. 
And we did have a bit of a false breakout and price is now back below that level and some bearish price action there as well. Now that false breakout and overall this choppiness in price in the last couple of days does indicate to me that you know investors are still somewhat uncertain about next week. Yes, we know most likely they will be getting a 50 point hike. That's not really of dispute. What is a little bit more, um, let's say, what was, was a little bit more ambiguous is what Jerome Powell will actually say during that speech. And that's what a lot of these Fed meetings are actually about. Most of the time, we almost know with a high degree of certainty what the Fed will do with regards to rates. But it's all about the uh, Fed chair, Jerome Powell's tone uh, in his speech, uh, what he says regarding to regarding to rates, um, the dovish and the hawkishness within his speech, that plays a huge part in the forward-looking nature here of equity. So for that reason, we are now seeing that ambiguity. We've seen this before, usually a week before a Fed meeting, especially nowadays where the Fed meetings are so important. We tend to see a lot of choppiness in price action and a bit of uncertainty. And for that reason, I would I am not really a big fan of placing a great number of trades right now i'd much rather wait and see what the fed does but we are seeing price now back below the 404 level we have a bit of um i would say a minor trend line support or even some horizontal support at 390 as a potentially as a potential downward target here for the s p ahead of that meeting but ultimately it's that, that meeting is going to be what dictates the next month or so of price action, um, whether it can, whether price can actually be able to break above that 404 level and push higher to potentially that 23.6 level here on at 418, as you can see on the weekly chart, or if it can even break higher back to 428. So um, overall, you know, still somewhat ambiguous. Let's see what happens next week. Taking a look at the NASDAQ 100 using the QQQ ETF, similar price action. Um, and we also have some minor areas of, uh, I would say, support at around a 280 range. You know, price has pulled back to that level a few times and has tested that level a few times in the last couple of weeks. Now, key areas to be looking out for is 300. So, you know, lower than inflation, I know lower than expected inflation would likely see price rally back up to the 300 level. However, um, if we get higher than expected inflation, a more ambiguous Fed announcement uh, next week or Fed speech next week, I wouldn't be surprised to see price one retest 280, but even break back below that to, down to that 268. And that's because the NASDAQ 100 is a lot more volatile. It is um, a lot more highly exposed to growth stocks and technology stocks. And these are stocks that are, are a lot more sensitive to rises in interest rates. Moving on to IWM, um, which is a Russell 2000 ETF. So we're looking at small caps here. And once again, price is retesting and failed that failing at that 188 uh, key area, which is also the 38.2 FIB level. So as you can see on the weekly time frame, even though we had a double bottom at 163 and a bit of a rally here to 188, price is unable to break above that. A lot of bearish price action there. And in my opinion, a fundamental catalyst is definitely needed for price to break back above that 188. However, as we can see here, especially on the weekly time frame, the last few weeks it hasn't necessarily been bearish, even though price broke, has um, shown bearish price action of 188. We can see price is finding support near its 21 and 55 day exponential moving averages at around that 180 area. So again, another minor area of support forming here for IWM. But the key areas to be looking at would be the FIB levels here on the weekly chart. Obviously, you have 188. You also have 200, um, a strong psychological level and a previous area of resistance, as well as 209, 210, which is a 23.6 FIB level. In terms of downside areas to be looking at, 50% FIB level at 170. But in my, opinion, in my opinion, the more important level here would be 163, where price has made that double bottom on the weekly chart. Okay, taking a look here at TLT, which is the Treasury Bond ETF. And 
lot of momentum in recent days. You know, we did see a bit of a rebound. Price um, got back into that area between the 21 and 55-day exponential moving averages. And traditionally speaking, that's always been a good time to short TLT over the last few months. However, that momentum momentum carried price to break above its 55-day and actually come back to retest it and bounce higher here. Um, so a lot of momentum behind this move. Set price is set to open a little bit higher this morning. And um, that does look like price has a momentum to potentially reach that 112 key area, which was a previous swing level as well, 111 and 112. So keep an eye on TLT over the next few days for that level. But overall, you know, structure is still bearish, right? We, we have this bearish structure. Um, this does look like a bit of a relief rally so far. And that's also based on the information that we have currently. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how price reacts at that 111, 112 level, because overall, interest rates are still high. Um, it's not like we hit this pivot where the Fed has stopped increasing interest rates. We are still increasing interest rates. And, you know, for that reason, um, TLT will always be under a bit of pressure. Taking a look at the US dollar, I'm using the DXY dollar index, and you know we've had some pretty interesting price action. So first of all, we had this huge uptrend over the last few months, and more recently, since September, price was consolidating above 110, but also uh, below 114, which was acting as resistance. We have a bit of a uh, trend line resistance there, and obviously with last month's inflation announcement. We saw price break below multiple key areas of support very, very quickly. It broke below 110, it broke below 107.50. And even now, more recently, it has broken below that 105.50 um, level as well after initially finding some support, but lacking the momentum to break back above that 107.50 level. So with price now breaking below another key area of support, coming back to retest it today, so far, this looks like a failed intraday retest. Same thing happened on Friday, failed intraday retest. Um, it does look like sentiment still remains somewhat bearish for the US dollar. However, I would take that with a bit of caution because from a fundamental perspective, the US dollar is still quite strong. The Fed have higher interest rates than the other major currencies and the other major, um, other major central banks. And for that reason, um, there is always going to be that underlying demand for the US dollar. It's just that with the Fed only increasing rates by 50 basis points or potentially only increasing rates by 50 basis points next week um, instead of the 75 that they have been over the last few months, we are naturally seeing that slight rotation out of the dollar. I still view this as more of a pullback, maybe a bit of a dramatic pullback but not really a reversal just yet. The basket of currencies that the dollar is compared to, they still remain relatively weak. Um, when you look at their central bank's um, interest rates and their hiking trajectory, it's, I still think there's a bullish case potentially for the US dollar early 2023. But for now, you know, the potential downside here would be at around 102 to between 102 and 100. 100 has acted as a key area before, 102 was a previous swing level. So that, that will be the potential downside that I see here for DXY. And taking a look at the chart that moves inversely to the Euro, US dollar, we have gold. So gold has been showing a lot of bearish price action in the last couple of days. We had a huge um, run here, a huge rally from around 151 after the inflation announcement. You know, gold managed to break above 157, which was a key area of resistance and support. Pulled back a little bit and, again, found a lot of momentum to reach 167. But since then, we can see price has rejected that level. Huge bearish day yesterday. And price is um, set to open a little bit higher this morning. Now, I don't view this bearish price action as a reversal for gold by any means. Because if the dollar continues to decline, naturally gold will be elevated. However, this does um, you know, provide potentially a short-term buying opportunity for gold where you do see a pullback here um, back to that 164 key area, but already price is set to open a little bit higher. So 167 
acting as resistance for now. But if the dollar index continues to decline, look for a break above 167 and potentially a move to 171, which is another uh, key area to be looking at here for gold. Okay, so taking a look here at oil using the USO uh, ETF and price action, you know, I've said this before, very, very choppy in recent months. We did see a bit of a breakdown um, due to what was, what was happening in China, especially with regards to protests uh, in Beijing and, you know, what was happening with regards to the COVID-19 policy, the fact that it was maybe a bit too harsh. Um, it, it always it was always going to be a risk for oil because China is a huge consumer of oil. And with, you know, having a zero, tol zero tolerance COVID policy, that demand for oil does dissipate quite quickly. However, we did see price rebound. Um, we are seeing Chinese officials ease up on, um, ease up on their COVID restrictions. That's also caused a, Pretty cool risk rally here in Chinese stocks, um, which has recently experienced a pause. And that is one of the contributing factors as to why price has actually rejected 71 and is actually moving lower, um, even set to open a good bit lower this morning at 66. However, the real reason for this rapid decline in price is the fact that the US and EU have added a layer of um, complexity by essentially capping Russian oil at $60 a barrel. And they did this by not allowing EU companies to ensure Russian oil brought in for more than $60 a barrel. And that's really just for, in an effort to restrict the flow of petrodollars that are essentially financing Russia's war um, in Ukraine. So that is why we have seen in the last couple of days, the last couple of sessions, a lot of bearish price action and a bit of a very quick decline here in USO as well. Okay, so taking a look at sector rotation, we still have six sectors in the improving and leading category. We have five in the lagging and weakening, and not much of a change. There hasn't been that much rotation in between categories. Um, we are noticing now some shifts in trend though. Energy continuing to move lower, and not surprising, um, considering that oil is still it's not bullish. It's still you know, fairly neutral when the rest of the market's moving higher over the last few months. We have healthcare, though, a defensive sector, actually experiencing a good bit of outward rotation, looking like it might even rotate into the weakening categories. So healthcare underperforming the other uh, defensive sector in staples. And we also are seeing a slight rotation back into utilities, which is the other defensive sector. So for now, healthcare, a um, bit of weakness there after showing a good few months of leadership. Financials starting to lose that relative momentum as well, while industrials is staying strong and improving with regards to relative strength, momentum and relative strength. In the lagging category, technology is once again looking like it may rotate back into that improving category. And naturally with technology being such a heavy weighting on the NASDAQ and the S&P, those indices will likely move higher as well should technology keep up this performance. Real estate as well, after months of underperformance, starting to show some life and improving its moment, relative momentum. Discretionary, on the other hand, still quite weak, still experiencing a good bit of outward rotation. Okay, so moving on to some subsectors of interest that I have for you today, we have KWEB, which is a Chinese internet ETF. This was a name that we looked at uh, last week. And actually, quite a few of the names today are going to be names that we looked at last week. Again, you know, the, with this week being very choppy in price action, very ambiguous, I'm not a big fan of entering too many trades uh, this week until after that Fed meeting where we get a much more clearer picture as to where markets might head. But taking a look at um, KWEB. And since we last spoke, you know, we saw price essentially retest and start to, start to bounce higher from its 21 and 55 day exponential moving averages after this, um, you know, rally with a good bit of momentum. Since then, you know, price has continued to accelerate here to the upside. A lot of momentum behind this move. 
it is approaching a bit of an overbought condition, but it also did reach our upside uh, price target at around the 30, 31 area here for KWEB. So Chinese stocks are doing quite well after a very, very long period of underperformance. So we have a new name here in XHB, which is the Home Builder ETF. And I, would, I wouldn't say this is outright bullish in terms of my thinking here, but I do think there's definitely been a bit of a shift in structure. So last few months has seen XHB you know, form a very bearish structure, continuously breaking below key areas of support, lack of upside momentum. But more recently, you know, we do have a higher low and price breaking back above a key area of support at, or previous support at $60. And now since then, it has consolidated in the last few months, of last few weeks. But this still provides a good risk to reward bullish opportunity, especially for a strategy like credit spreads, where um, even if price is neutral, it can still end up being a profitable trade. It doesn't have to move higher, although that would still be the better outcome. So the reason it's on that, and that's that's actually the reason why it's on my watch list is because I do want to see price retest at $60 level. If I can see any bullish price action like we have in the last couple of touches, that will provide an excellent risk to reward bullish entry point for that potential move higher. Okay, so taking a look at another name that we looked at last week, and that was Alibaba. So Alibaba, you know, very similar to KWEB, where we saw this upward move breaking above its 21 and 55 day exponential moving averages, bit of a pullback and another move higher. This time though, it did manage to break above that 88 um, Key, dollar key area of previous support turned resistance and is set to open a little bit higher this morning the last time I checked so um you know this is what is one of those trades where it was initially a quick and quick out kind of entry but that being said with price having the momentum that it currently does you know I'd be looking for a continuation of this rally potentially all the way to a hundred um that would act as a psychological level here as well for Alibaba the only thing that you'd want to uh, be wary of is the fact that price is approaching that overbought condition with the 50 period CCI um, very close to the 200 area. So whenever the 50 period CCI reaches that overbought condition, we tend to always notice or almost always notice a, a pullback in price. Uh, but again, that only provides a better risk to reward bullish entry in the future. Okay, moving on to General Motors. So General Motors, another name that we looked at last week, and our thesis for this trade was price staying below 40. Um, 40 was a key area of resistance that we were looking at. And over the last few weeks, we have had multiple retests of this area, you know, we, and we can see very bearish price action. Despite all of this momentum, that has since dissipated in a few weeks, and we are seeing very bearish price action at, um, below at around the 40 area. That being said, you know, it's still more of a neutral trend, um, even though 40 is acting as a hard resistance level, we're not actually seeing a reversal lower in price. We're just seeing that trend shift from bullish to neutral. So again, another, another good um, candidate for a credit spread. Taking a look at CLF. So this is a new name for last week. And CLF um, was a bearish idea that I had with the thesis of price staying below 16, um, which is an area of resistance here on the daily time frame. Um, we did see a false breakout last week, Friday, and immediately yesterday, price managed to break back below the $16 level um, and close at $15.78. But overall, the risk to rewards here still favors the downside. So this thesis, in my opinion, is still valid. And we have Roku. So I know I did say I'm not really a fan of looking at new trading opportunities, this, or that many new trading opportunities this week, but I do see an interesting um, bearish setup here for Roku. So Roku has maintained a very bearish um, trend on the weekly, and you can see on the daily, it's broken below a few areas of support. More recently, though, um, price has managed to retest this level at around the $60 level. 
I'd had a positive earnings announcement. Um, I mean, an upside surprise earnings announcement, but still forward guidance was a little bit shaky, which is why we did see initially a dip down in price, um, immediately followed by a recovery back to 60, but still price is struggling to break above that level. So the thesis for this is that price stays below 60, and we are seeing that bearish price action. So again, another good candidate for a credit spread, in my opinion. Potential downside targets would be near the $50 area. Uh, or potentially slightly lower here for Roku. So a short term, definitely a bit more, bit more of a short term setup. And with that, that is all I have for you today. A bit of a shorter market outlook this week, uh, but again, that's just due to you know the fact that markets are quite ambiguous um, right now, and we are pretty much waiting what happens next week. Um, and with that, I uh, hope you all have a great trading week ahead. I will see you next week.